Hi, welcome to another episode of TFT Hyper Roll from Mission for Tuition, where I show you some builds that I'm using and hope that you can learn something from them and maybe help yourself on this crazy road to hyper. Please remember to feed the algorithm gods and put a like on the video. The channel is called Mission for Tuition because we are trying to pay for our son's middle and high school tuition since he has to go to a frightfully expensive school. We do it solely through ad revenue. We do not ask for donations or anything like that. So please like the video. It helps us so much. And with that, let's do this thing. I always tell people pay attention to what the game is telling you and in this case the game was screaming at me you need to think about redeemed here. Now normally if I'm building redeemed I like to start with a sunfire cape on Leona but I don't have both components for it yet. So I decide to just pick up the BF sword and then see what I can do with it. I know ultimately I'm taking the recursive bow off of Atrox so I decide to go ahead and load up the Varus because I know that Redeemed is going to get weak in the mid game when you're switching between the three to six. And if you start off losing, you're going to be in big trouble and you might not ever get towards the end game. So I need early characters to be strong. And while a Sunfire Cape would certainly help Leona's general tankiness along with the Redeemed buff and Varus's ability to do as much damage as he's doing right now is going to help us through this initial fight. I pick up a Nautilus because as we go to four, I might want to lean into Knights. And even though I got through the first round, I run into a team that is much better equipped. Even though they don't have a specific buff ready, they have a Sunfire Cape on a Leona and three silver characters, which gives them a distinct advantage going into this round, and it's pretty easy for them to dispatch me. I decide to go ahead and grab the Giant's Belt as one component of the Sunfire Cape that I ultimately want to get on Leona or at least into my front line. I roll through but I'm finding a remarkable lack of redeemed characters but they are giving me some additional knights so I'm picking them up. I would have hoped to have found at least a Syndra or at least have a two star Atrox by now but it just is not playing along despite this game's initial promises that it was going to give me lots of redeemed characters. And I don't like it when games don't keep their promises. I two-star up my Nautilus and roll down, but I am just not finding what I want. And at this point, I realize I'm going to have to pivot away from a pure redeem build and something more like Knights and Rangers. But that would mean finding another Ranger, and I haven't been thinking that way so far. So with another defeat, it's time to look at Radiant items. And there's nothing here that's absolutely perfect, but the Zenith Edge will enhance the other two items I already have with the Rage Blade and Bloodthirster, making the attacks more powerful as well as heal. So on to Varus it goes. I get a Tome of Traits from the previous NPCs, and it gives me the choice between Knight or Ranger. Since I already have three Knights, I decide, you know what, let's just take this up to the fourth Knight, rather than try and force a Ranger comp at this point. And so I dub the Dame Lux of High Silvermere. But sadly, Dame Lux alone is not enough to carry this. I would need a second Ranger in order to increase Varus' attack speed to make this really work out. And they are just going to get torn apart, especially by a gold vein with a Runin's Hurricane able to take them apart. Now, obviously, someone at Riot heard my cries of pain and decided to help me out with... Oh, come on, you gotta be kidding me! After I compose myself and finish stomping around the room, I come back and find an ash in the shop. And that way, at least I'll be able to trigger the ranger buff. I decide to put a Spear of Sojin onto Lux so she can cast more often and hopefully keep the team up longer. The ranger buff certainly seems to be helping out in this case as the attacks are coming faster and with that zenith edge, Varus is doing a ton of damage and they're able to hold this team back, which otherwise would have torn us apart without that ranger buff. But I know I need another plan. Rito decides to give me a loaded dice and I then have an idea for how I want to play this out, but it's going to be an incredibly risky strategy moving forward. 
and sometimes, especially when you're playing hyper role, you have to take the big risks in order to have things work out, because if you try to play it safe, you're just a couple of hits away from dying. I know at this point I need to get into round 8 for my highest chance of rolling legendary characters with as much gold as possible, so I need to survive through all of round 7 to do it. Luckily, round 7.1 is an NPC round, and I can finally then finish off my Sunfire Cape, which I decide to put on Nautilus because I'm not a thousand percent sure I'm going to be keeping Leona throughout the entire game. But at this point, I am not rolling anymore. My goal is now to get into round eight, use that loaded dice, and hopefully get a Kale. Meanwhile, I'm going to make some use of these reforchers that Riot forced upon me and hopefully come up with some better items for my front line to keep me safe. Now, it is not that I'm throwing these next two games. I definitely would like to win because there is no strategy at this point in purposely losing. But I am purposely not rolling. I'm not trying to make this particular team any stronger because my goal is to get into level 8 use the loaded die and try to get my hands on a kale that I can move these Varus items to because that might be able to save this entire build. I'm continuing to reforge because I want better items and the Zeke's Herald will work nicely if I can put it in between Varus and another player. So I throw it onto Ash and then have her in position so that Varus will be attacking faster. But at this moment, it simply isn't going to matter, as I am facing knight and ironclad team after knight and ironclad team, and my Varus does just not have the power to get through this. He's still just a two-star, two-cost character who's going to get crushed when anything gets in his face. So we back our way into level 8, and it's time to do the loaded dice, and I get really lucky picking up a Kale and a Garen that I can make use of. So it is now time to say goodbye to Varus and hello to Kale, who is going to take over that position. Also, we are going to want to move Garen into the game so that we have six knights. So Ash will no longer be necessary because we're not doing a ranger buff anymore. We pull Thresh into the back line, give him the Zeke's Herald and the Infinity Edge we got off the NPC, and hope we can survive this round so we can then roll down and see what we can get. It works really well as Kale is able to do tons of damage with that Zenith Edge and Rage Blade with the Bloodthirster keeping her alive even through a direct Vel'Koz ult. We spend the next 30 seconds rolling like crazy, but are unable to find a silver kale, but we did find one more. We were able to silver up the Lux and have ourselves in a pretty good position. Having six knights along with the redeemed and ironclad buff is making this entire team very tanky and difficult to get through. With Kale ascending in the back and attacking more quickly, she is able to just cut through anything in her path once she gets where she needs to go. And from the verge of elimination, we are into the top four. After the NPC round, we get the chance to silver up our Garen and go for it. But right now, I am really looking for that next Kale. And we can use a Teemo because there's no difference between two and one health. It did give us a Silver Rel, and there's our Kale. We just need to sell some things, and we have our Silver two-star Kale. I decide to bring everything back to make sure that Kale is 100% protected. Notice at this point I also have Luxes on both sides of the screen, so I'm going to be having shields coming from both angles. That's important because I want everyone to stay alive as long as possible as Kale becomes more powerful throughout the match. As you know, it takes about 20 seconds before Kale hits full ascension, and once she does, she will just start tearing a team apart, no matter how strong they are. Right now, the name of the game is last for 20 seconds, so I need to do everything in my power to keep Kale alive for at least 20 seconds, because that's when she'll reach full ascension, and that's when she'll be able to just regen health incredibly quickly and not go down. You can see it right here. The health comes right back, and she's able to finish off that super strong vein. 
At this point, I decide it's probably a good idea to make a little bit of use of Gwen because that will give me the Mystic buff as well as her passive will create more tankiness around my key players. This is an ironclad ranger team that we are facing that is going to have a lot of power and be able to do damage early, so I need to mitigate as much of that as possible, and keeping Kale in Gwen's passive is key to that. Luckily, that Zenith Edge does a lot of damage, and Kale is able to ultimately finish them off and win the match. Thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and have an absolutely awesome day.